what is food? Can eat something through our mouth, uh, so... No shall but... Essential. Okay. So food are, you know, steak, corn, and rice, vegetable salad, and those uh, provide us to our body nutrition and strength energy and also make us grow. Our children uh, eat food and uh, grow. Uh, what do you feel after eating? What do you feel after you eat food? Happy. Right, right. It's strong. Yeah. <laughs> um, it gives us joy, satisfaction, and some degree you know, feeling happy. What happens to your body when you do not eat? Become weary. Hungry. 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 Lonely, <laughs> depression. Uh, I couldn't eat well, and I feel so. I don't know. Emptiness. <laughs> <laughs> Hungry, sad, lonely, depressed. Wow. That really affects our uh, condition. And then starved. Even when it, it lasts too long, then it, it goes uh, malnourished, malnutrition, and then lose health, right? Question two. First question. What are the foods for a man's mind? So there is a physical food, and then what a food for men's mind? Uh, <clears throat> love. Yeah, yeah. Um, whatever our mind desires, we need to feed. So, we have a food for body. We have a food for mind. We have a we have a food for soul. You know because. She just mentioned this food and he went this one. So I added in the middle, food for mind. So whatever the heart desires, we want to be fed. Our mind wants to be fed. So our mind becomes what? Strong, nourished, healthy, and they're full of energy, you know. So our heart needs to be fed with love. Trust. Yeah. Trust. And then our heart is uh, full of desires, right? And that we want to be successful. Be respected. Yes, respected. Owning respect. We are, our heart wants to money. And also, above all, we want to accomplish something. Accomplish. Accomplishment. So, so struggle day and night. There are many things. The food for our heart. And so, 
We want to glory. We want to be the world famous. Question two, second question. What do you feel eating food for your mind? After eating. That means you got it, you know? Well, it's, it's delight. Right. And proud. Uh -huh. And confident. Right. And uh, secure. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, joy, satisfaction, happy, proud, and secure. And, uh, you know, ah. Uh, it, 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 you know, in glory. So you can see these things from billionaires, millionaires, well, all the famous writers, scientists, all these. They, they fed up, you know, they ate well. <laughs> what happens to your mind when you do not eat food for your mind? Feel oh. frustrate. <laughs> Frustration. The same. I think the depressed, hungry for something sad. Yeah. And yeah. feeling behind. And the empty empty. Empty. Right. Feel right. small. Uh-huh. Question three. What are the food for a man's soul? God's word. Exactly. This, this is the food, right? Physical food. Uh, this is, this food comes from God. It only comes from God. Only God feed our soul. Only God feed, satisfies our soul. So prayer and the word of God. Read of God. And Jesus said, his food is the will of God, doing the will of God. So, this is exclusively, this food comes only from God. And what do people feel after eating spiritual food? Peace. Uh -huh. And joy. Peace, joy, happiness. Forgiveness. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay. So when Jesus said, I have my own food, so he evangelized one Samaritan woman. And then when she accepted Jesus, Jesus was full of joy that's here. His soul was just fed. And then Jesus was so satisfied, happy. He didn't want to eat food. He didn't want to eat food. You know, when you this, your soul is fully satisfied, you don't feel physical hunger. And also, you, 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 you don't really need this one. This, because this satisfaction covers the all. But uh, in other way, you eat the stomach full, but you're still hungry for your mind, and you have a hunger for your soul. The same way, this food, you have so much, but this food cannot satisfy your soul. Your soul. So, 
I, I, you know, in the TV, I watching TV, one uh, basketball player, NBA, he had a, you know, success. So he had a lot of money, house and cars. But he said he felt empty. He felt empty. He felt hungry ball in his soul. So this one, this food and this one cannot feed our soul. So even though they have a lot of food, a lot of money, a lot of worldly stuff, they are still hungry. They are still empty in their soul. Because this food comes only from God. Okay, question four. Yes. <clears throat> what is Jesus do? Jesus do the doing the will of God? Yeah. Jesus food is doing the will of God. So in this chapter, Jesus led one Samaritan woman to Jesus, to eternal life. And that was Jesus' food for his soul. What kind of food is it? Okay, we already did. It is food for the soul. Uh -huh. So, doing it, doing the will of God, my uh, food is, I, I missed the title, something missing. Doing the will of God is his food. Uh -huh. What about the Christian life? Just uh, come Sunday and then Monday through Friday, you know, go to work and come Sunday like that. And what the kind of a Christian life? So when we really do not do cast, you know, to the will of God, we don't have this joy. We don't have this satisfaction in our soul. Uh, people just trying to get you know, soul, uh, happiness of their soul, just like a, a coming just a, once a week to Sunday, or just through some occasional Bible study. <laughs> and they are not satisfied. They are not satisfied. They really have to jump in to do the work of God and struggle and then accomplish. Wow, then it goes. Joy of a tsunami. You really don't care whether you have physical food or you have accomplishment in this world. It's the joy is so great. Like a tornado, you know? That kind of joy when we do the work of God. Okay, let's go question five. Compare the life in God and the life in human. Gospel John, theme is life. Life. So let's compare life in God and then life in man or in human. So 
a thing. What is the life in, in man? What kind of a body do we have? Huh? What kind of body do we have? Um, what? Or we have maybe? a we have a body of a flesh. Okay. Here, God is spirit. Jesus said, "God is a spirit." So, this is spirit don't have a body. It's a spirit. Invisible. Invisible. It's different. And then, uh, our people's life is in body. We are born, become old, become sick, and then die, and go hell. Sorry, but it's true. So this is the people's life. Born and become old, sick, and die, and go to hell. Some don't have to be old. Little children, they born, they sick, become sick, and die, and then go ahead. So, this is a human life we call life. In here, God is a spirit. There is no birth. No death. No birth, no death. Uh, why we become sick? Why, why we become sick? Because without a soul of food. We, we become sick because we have a flesh. We have a, a body of a flesh, so we become sick. We, we have a, in the body of a flesh, we have a injury by fall. Injury, and then we have a uh, bacteria, virus, and then all kind of uh, uh, abnormal body mechanism. Those make us sick. When we hear spirit, can bacteria make a spirit sick? No. <laughs> Why it takes so long? <laughs> Bacteria. <I'm right> on. <laughs> Bacteria cannot make. Yeah, it doesn't have a body. So how can bacteria make virus that will make this body sick? No way. And no injury in this body. No injury. And uh. This body is temporal, temporary. This body lasts only 60, 70, 80 years. That's it. This body is what? Spirit never dies. This is eternal. Eternity, body of eternity. eternity. We have, we have an image of God. We have an image of God. 
so we can discern what is holy, what is uh, evil, what is good. We can discern. Uh, but this is uh, not powerful. In, in, in spirit, in God, there is truth. Resurrection power. Resurrection power. Love. The most of all, holiness. Holiness. So how do you say the difference? Life in God, life in human. Which one is better? Yeah. This is a lot better. And this is really uh, incomplete. But we call this life. But in God's eyes, this is not life. This is life. This is not life. This life is become sick and die and go to hell. And do you want this life? Do you want to have this life? Yes, yes of course. <laughs> <laughs> God wants to give this life. God wants to give this life to dying, hopeless people. God wants to share this life, his life, eternal life. I mean, we just call eternal life. Bible says eternal life. But there are a lot more. It's just not, not dying, live forever. No, there is a lot more. It's superior life. Amazing, superior life. This is, it's like an animal. A little bit of an animal. But God wants to give his life to us. Question six. What is the will of God? <clears throat> so what is the will of God? Jesus said, my food is to do the will of God. So what is the will of God? Give life. Give life to die. That's right. So Sunday message. God wants to give his life to Time man. The will of God is on us. He wants to share. And he wants us to live. To live. And not to die. This is will of God. God doesn't want us to die. He wants us to live. Live spiritual life, God's life. Not to die in this perishable life. That's the will of God. So, Gospel John, the theme is life. John chapter 1 verse 4 is, In him was life, and that life was the light of man. John chapter 5, verse 24b. Uh, whoever listened to the word of Jesus, he moved, he has moved from death to life. John chapter 20, verse 31b. 
is that so that whoever believes in Jesus may not perish but have eternal life. So Gospel John theme theme is life. God wants us to live and not to die. Question seven. Whom did God send to do the will of God? Jesus Christ. Right. So God sent Jesus into this world to carry on the will of God. So Jesus' ministry is, Jesus' work is giving life to the dying people. Jesus' work in this world is giving life to the dying people. Jesus' work is life-giving ministry. Okay, let's go question A. What causes sickness in a man? No, this is a uh, um, physical sickness. Yeah. What causes a physical sickness in a man? The virus, injury. Um. Yeah, diseases, injuries. Bacteria, virus, fungus, yeast, uh, you know, all kind of mental uh, health. Disorder in Disorder. metabolism and all. It's because we have a body, we have a flesh, that's why we become sick. Okay, next question. What is this like, life like of a sick person? <coughs> Painful, uh, suffering, misery, uh, suffering. no passion, mm -hmm. no will. Tired, fear, tired, fear to die. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, some people recover in few days or couple of weeks. Uh, they recover, but some people sick become sick long time, like uh, become sick for years, and then when they are sick, they uh, suffer and miserable. It's so miserable. Uh, you know, I had a pain non-stop, twenty-four hours. I couldn't go to sleep. It's just uh, so miserable. And my all mental activity stopped there because of pain. So, you know, like uh, students, they become sick during school years. They drop out of school and they have to recover first. After they recover, they can go back to school. And then and they are lucky. But period. The period of illness, there is no life, no productive life. It's just a you know, victim of pain, victim of misery. And you become sick for a long time, and then you are just confined to bed, and the sick person is forgotten, is forgotten by friend and relatives and by the world hmm? because the world doesn't go after sick people they go after celebrities so sick people is, is so sad uh, cannot live a full life but barely barely maintain life and this is not life What is God's will on the physically sick? Mm. 
Healing. Yeah. Healing. God doesn't want them to die in sickness. God wants them to be healed and have a full life. That's will of God. That's God's will. This is a sick person. Sick person, you know. Why others are so healthy? Why am I so sick? And then it, it becomes so negative, you know. But that person may be deep in down, longing for healing. But that's what God wants. God wants be healed, the person be healed, be healthy, and have a life. How did Jesus give life to those who are sick? So Jesus came into this world with a mission to give life. So what did he do to a man born blind? He opened the blind man's eyes. Yeah. This man born blind, he had no life. He couldn't go to school. He couldn't get a job. Hey, maybe he couldn't get married. And then in the street corner, he was begging. This is not life. So Jesus opened his eyes. So life returned to this man. Life came to this man when Jesus opened his eyes. How about this woman who had a bleeding problem for 12 years and turned out incurable? What did Jesus do to her? And he knocks his mom came. Jesus stopped her breathing, cured. Jesus cured. Yeah, Jesus cured. When Jesus, when she was uh, uh, healed from this bleeding problem, what happened to her life? She really became joyful and uh, delight. Yeah. Restored. 12 years when she was sick, she had no life. She was so miserable. But when Jesus healed her, she restored to life, different life, full of life. Okay. How about boy possessed with evil spirit? When the boy was under the evil spirit, what was the life like of this boy? Daddy's um, parents like a really concerned about the, his condition. Yeah. Worried. And can I have uh, some normal activity? But she just drove out the evil spirit from mm -hmm. him. So the father, father had no peace in his heart. All the time, he was distressed and under the fear that evil spirit might uh, kill his boy. This boy was thrown into fire, thrown into water. But when Jesus drove out uh, evil spirit, the boy was restored to full life. This is example of Jesus' life-giving ministry. This is Jesus carried on the will of God among dying people, among sick people. Okay. Uh, why should healing come first before having a powerful physical life? This is 
easy question. Uh, when we are sick, uh, we cannot really function. Yeah, yeah. function. Okay. Overcoming sickness, and then we can work for the will of God. Mm -hmm. Other than that, yeah. Yeah. Just stuck in there. Right. We have to be healed first. Healed first to have dynamic, powerful, blessed. Uh, fruitful life. You have to be healed. So we really concentrate on healing, you know. Question nine. Is there a spiritual sickness or not? Yes, of course. Yes, there is a spiritual sickness. We finish physical sickness, mm -hmm. we move on to spiritual, spiritual sickness. There is spiritual sickness. And every person, every human being has spiritual sickness. Everyone, no exception. Every single person, every man, every woman has own spiritual sickness. Okay, second question. What is the life like of what is life? What like, is the life like? Like spiritual spirit spiritually spiritually sick person. Sick person. Um They live with their own will, mm -hmm. and they don't understand the will of God. Mm -hmm. No peace. No yeah. peace. Okay. Uh, it, it's very hard to know spiritual sickness. Very hard. Uh, majority people think they are not sick. They are healthy, but physically sick, they are miserable, lonely, and they have a kind of a symptom. Spiritually sick, they vaguely feel, they vaguely feel, but generally they feel empty, miserable. Uh, next question. What causes the spiritual sickness? Living without what of God, living without knowing Savior Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Sin. Sin. Yeah. Sin. The physical sickness was injury, bacteria, virus, germs, or something like that. Spiritual sickness caused by sin. And those sins are like a pride, self-centered, stubborn, seeking worldly glory from another man, fear, ambition, arrogance, cruelty, all these cause. Adultery. Uh -huh. Adultery, all these cause make our spirit sick, our soul sick. So this is hard to detect. What is God's will on the spiritually sick? Save from sin. Right. God wants them to be healed. Be healed. And have a healthy, healthy soul, healthy spirit. That's God's will. So God's will is every single sick, spiritually sick person 
be healed and have a powerful, fruitful, blessed life. Receive God's life. That is God's will. Okay, so when we are exposed to uh, others' sickness, spiritual sickness, we we really feel burden. We hate, you know. We want to run away from that person, <laughs> stay away from that person. But God's will is. I, God wants that person to be healed and have, receive God's life. So what's the first step to be healed from spiritual sickness? Mm. Help, <clears throat> help them to know themselves uh, spiritual sick. Yeah. Confess. Okay. Through the Bible. Yeah. They need love. They need love. love. <laughs> I I tell you, I tell you. I was not I have not been successful telling people this is your spiritual sickness. Because when I say that, they close their mind. Instead of accepting it, they were hurt, hurt, and then they close their mind. So you know, we, I don't know if you can do it, but to my opinion, I cannot make anybody realize her spiritual sickness or his spiritual sickness. That person must go to God and God must show him this. And so, through Bible study, some people realize their spiritual sickness. But some people really kneel down before God and pray, Lord, I'm so miserable. And God shows them why that person is so miserable. But first step to be healed is that person must realize Oh, I have such sickness in my soul, in my heart. When they realize it, 50% healing already started, already started. Healing doesn't come because that person doesn't know what kind of a spiritual sickness he has. But when he knows Healing starts. So, you know, anybody, life is so miserable, should not point at, blame others, but need to go to God and kneel down before God and pray. So, you know, the uh, in theology, only those God want to say, God show them their sins. Only those. Otherwise, the rest don't know they are sick in their soul and then never turn away. And then salvation doesn't come. And this is the very critical moment. A uh, Samaritan woman, Jesus said, Go and bring your husband. That moment, she, she realized her sickness. So, how did Jesus do? What did Jesus do 
to give life to those who are sick spiritually. Jesus died for their sin. Amen. He gave, he gave his blood on the cross. He gave his life on the cross. This Jesus' death on the cross is so powerful. It's the only treatment to sick souls. Only treatment is through the blood of Jesus. So anybody, anybody come before Jesus. I am sick. I am sick because of my pride, because of my ambition. Please heal me. Then they say, see, Jesus already paid all the, you know, sins, already paid on the cross <clears throat> and set free from the iron power of the sin. And it just, the iron power of the sin just becomes like ashes, it's like a powder and it just disappear and God gives his life, spiritual life, eternal life. So there is no way anybody can be healed without Jesus. Jesus is the only solution. The question nine, last question. Why should healing come first before having a powerful spiritual life? This is the, the essential first healing. Mm. Yeah. I think so we, when we get sick and then we try hard to uh, overcome sickness, illness with our own knowledge, mm. will, all the technology, with information, gathering all uh, know-how, mm -hmm. but we fail. Mm -hmm. So we're stuck in their human limitation, mm -hmm. but then Let's say we are healed. Mm -hmm. That's a miracle. Mm -hmm. There's a there. There's the time. There's the time we aware the superior power mm -hmm. above our human being. Yeah. What can sick soul do? He cannot do anything. anything. Make more trouble. Make more trouble, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> make uh, uh, people around miserable. The six, you know, with the sickness, that person sickness must be healed. Then, then his soul will be healthy, powerful, fruitful, blessed, and bear fruit. So healing comes first. The problem is the Christians. Then they they don't have healing, but they go around with the sick soul. And then they think they want to serve Jesus and causing more trouble in the church. But uh, want to serve God should be must be healed first. There was a, you know, I read in the newspaper, there was a man all his life was Christian, but uh, he got cancer, and then doctor said, you have only certain several months to live. So he was uh, thinking about meeting Jesus now, after his death, but he never evangelized even one person. So he was, you know, feeling embarrassed to meet Jesus. What, what is going to answer? Jesus said, what did you do all your life? <laughs> did not leading even one person to Jesus. 
So he start to trying to, you know, lead even one person before he died. Then he received chemical treatment, radiation treatment. He was very weak and very sick. And he's going around trying to lead one person to Jesus, you know. As we have to be healed first, then with power, healthy, strong soul, we can serve the will of God. Question 10. Do you want to receive God's life? Yes. <laughs> You don't want <laughs> your yes, do. life in the flesh. No. <laughs> How about you? Do you want to receive God's life? Yes. Amen. How about you? Amen. Amen. I mean, you know, I was thinking yesterday and today, I receive a spiritual life. I receive a God's life. My goodness, this life is nothing. It's nothing. Really. It's just so amazing I can receive God's own life through Jesus. Only Jesus, through Jesus, we receive the life of God. Amen! Okay, the Bible studies up to here.